Hey there campers, Mark here and welcome back to Camp Legend. I know I haven't recorded anything or released anything in quite a while, but I have something for you today that I think is pretty special. I uh, got a chance to go to Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio, check out some uh, different board games and TCGs while I was there. And one of the ones I got a chance to check out was this one. Alpha Clash. Uh, Alpha Clash is a new game, and I'm going to forget the company. Oh, from Rising Empire Studios. Uh, it's newer. It's about two years old. Uh, it's a trading card game uh, for, you know, two players where you're playing uh, against one another uh, as superheroes. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, Marvel or DC superheroes. They are all superheroes uh, from Rising Empire Studios world. Uh, I will tell you if you love lore and want to understand characters, uh, I did get a chance to sit down and play test this at their booth, so I'll get a chance to run you through how the game's played. We're also going to go ahead and take some time and bust open this two-player starter kit that comes with two starter decks, uh, giving you both Mean Streak and one other character that we'll take a look at. If you're into lore, they do have a big, chunky, thick, hardback book. Uh, it's really nice that comes with all the lore, and there's a comic book if you just want to kind of get caught up in a little bit of the lore for the game as well. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and go to the tabletop and take a look at Alpha Clash. Uh, I also want to say uh, I got Alpha Clash, the two-player starter kit, uh, for free uh, from uh, one of the game's developers. Uh, I also got this game mat for free from the Game Haven, uh, a board game shop in Dayton, Ohio. I don't know if you could pick one of these up yet or not, but they are really nice, uh, three mil, double stitched, super thick. Uh, so I thought I would take a look and use it here. So really quickly, Alpha Clash, here's the two player starter kit. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up. I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull out our knife to be able to open this. I'm not ripping it open too much like a barbarian here. Although uh, you're probably already offended about how I've ripped the back of that packaging open. Um, you know, pretty typical, although I will say uh, this particular case is really nice. Uh, it's It's got very much the board game industry vibe to it. Uh, not that you need it to keep organized, but hey, if you wanted to pick this up and you wanted to keep a couple of decks unsleeved in it, man, uh, this is much nicer than a lot of sort of the junk cases that you're going to get from another card game. Let's take a look first at Mean Streak, uh, and then also we'll take a look at Mechina, uh, Machina. Um, I, I have gotten a chance to play this deck, uh, the Machina deck or Mechina deck, and uh, my opponent, a buddy of mine, was playing Mean Streak, so I do know at least a little bit about what they do. Um, you have a couple of things for the anatomy of the card. Let's go ahead and open it first. If you played Dragon Ball Z Super, you're going to be familiar with some of the key mechanics of this game. If you didn't, if you played it and didn't like Dragon Ball Z Super, like me, I will say there is one thing that isn't in this game um, that I think made this game a good bit more playable to me personally. So let's go over a couple of the things on the card. First off, the hollow treatment on these cards is absolutely gorgeous. So here you're going to have uh, what the type of the card is up at the top. So your contender, this is a hero based game. So your hero is going to be out on the board, you know, the entire time. Uh, and you're going to use cards to power them up. They're going to give your health total. Um, you're going to get the name of them right here. So mean streak uh, boosted. He's a super speed hero. And then you're going to get two abilities here. One of them is an ability that you can use when he's at 25 health or uh, less. And one of them is going to be an ability that's going to get better when he's at 15 health or less. And then, oh, which is very similar to Dragon Ball Z. If you play Dragon Ball Z Super, you had your Dragon Ball character over here uh, who was out the entire game. Uh, he had a certain ability at one health pool. He had another ability at a lower health pool and he got 
obviously more powerful at his lower health pool. Um, you're going to get a symbol down here, which I think is just representative of uh, some of the faction or set that your character is from. And then you're going to have an attack value and a health value right there as well. Let's go ahead and just put Mean Streak over here and take a look at this. Um, this, another really beautiful uh, treatment of a hollow. It's not hollowed all over, uh, but a good portion of it is. It's a beautiful card. Um, this is going to give you uh, a clash down here. It's going to tell you it's a clash ground. Uh, this is basically like an arena. Uh, one of them are able to be out at a time. Um, you're also going to see on these cards, you have a resource cost in the top. And then along here, I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me see if I can't get a non hollow version of this card a little bit closer to the camera for you. Give me a shot here. Okay, you can see here, this has a blue diamond in it. So it's gonna represent that it's gonna cost three to play, but then it's going to make sure that you play at least one blue resource in order to play it. I'll show you how to resource here in just a moment and hopefully I get all the rules right. I know I'll get at least the basics of them right. So you're gonna have these cards here, which are going to be, um, uh, clash grounds and once again you can have one of those out at a time very similar uh, if you have played Pokemon TCG and you can have one stadium out at a time um, here's some more clash grounds these ones being New York um, and then you're gonna have cards like these which are basically one-time use spells or abilities notice we don't have borders on any of these cards they all have beautiful artwork, they're gorgeous looking cards, and the hollow treatment on them is also really quite beautiful. So it's gonna show you right here at the bottom corner, it actually says, man, it's hard. It's You have to be really close on these action and clash buff. Um, the writing is super, super small. Most clash buffs are not gonna cost anything, and these are basically instant cast spells from Magic the Gathering or burst speed spells from Legends of Runeterra. It's going to allow you to be able to get out uh, uh, a quick action in the middle of combat where you can interact with your opponent. There is kind of like a stack in this game as you play that you'll see. Um, and of course, we have these clash buffs, uh, streaks inbound. Um, but you also have uh, just full-blown characters. Now, what's really interesting is this is Mean Streak. Uh, this is just... A different version of him which I think is particularly interesting so this mean streak is a three uh, health or three attack four health uh, creature um, that you're gonna be able to play onto your battlefield that'll be able to defend or intercept uh, whenever your hero is getting attacked or also make attacks against other characters and so you do have these characters as well and you kind of see here he costs three and you might not be able to see it but it costs at least one blue to be able to play him and of course we're getting three or four copies of each of these there's four copies there uh you can see here uh a mean streak uh that is called quick reflexes a four four um we have a lot of copies of basically mean streak in various versions are going to tell you what it's going to cost to put him in uh, another uh, clasher another contender type care not a contender the contender is your main um, but another clasher another character that can be used to attack and defend clashers uh, are are basically a clash card is basically a minion um, or a creature in another game uh, we can kind of see here we got a bunch of these type of characters you got t-bone uh, you got all kinds of things, uh, and then and then you have these, which are these are called trap cards uh, or accessories, um, and these are also going to be played out, but they're going to be played out less like instants. You have a bunch of stuff that's going to be played basically as sorceries uh, from Magic: The Gathering throughout the game, and these are going to be sort of one-time use things that are gonna hit the board. Um, some of these uh, these accessories, uh, I believe are very specifically, they can go out and then equip um, to uh, an ally. Um, and so you have uh, equipment and um, very similar uh, to, uh, you're gonna see a lot of that in this deck, uh, very similar to um, equipment in Magic the Gathering. You're gonna play them and then you're going to equip them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so lots of really, beautiful artwork lots of really cool cards uh once again the foiling on these things is absolutely gorgeous so that's gonna be mean streaks deck let's take a quick look at the other deck i apologize if you guys heard a text message noise come through as well i forgot to silence my phone before we started recording this and it's not really an easy thing to do because i'm using my phone 
as our top-down camera today. Um, this guy, you know, big dude, once again, the 25 health and the 15 health, one attack, uh, zero defense stat um, that you're going to use to be able to, you know, this is your main hero. Uh, his main goal uh, is to be able to disable your opponent's stuff and then put equipment out that he then flings and discards to draw more cards and deal damage. Uh, you have Antarctica and Siberia as your uh, sort of zones of play or your clash grounds uh, in the game. Um, you have uh, Energy Explosion, uh, which is going to be your clash buff. That's your instant speed buff that's going to buff up one of your characters. So just for example, this says... Um, you may only play this card if your contender is red, and it says target contender or clash card you control gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn, and then you may draw a card, right? Plus two attack, plus two health. Very simple buff. Uh, we have a bunch of copies and different variations of flare in the deck. We have flare, torque, you have uh, some different versions of machina as well. Uh, torque is another character. I called him Barry Allen the Vampire because... To me, that's what he looks like. And so your deck is made up of these different heroes uh, and, uh, you know, superheroes that are in the deck. Um, you have, oh, like this one even has shrapnel. Uh, the shrapnel card even has mean streak on it. Um, and then I think uh, I'm looking for one that I know is just a straight up equipment. Oh, right here. And so you can see this. It has an accessory. It shows you. Uh, what it's going to cost to attach it. I don't know if you can kind of see that clearly, but right here it says what it's going to cost to attach it. Let me see if I can't turn my phone, because evidently I'm the most popular man in the world right now. Let's turn my phone on Do Not Disturb really quick, just to make sure we don't see any more text messages come in. And then here's another one. You can kind of see it costs two to play, requires at least one red. Uh, but then here at the bottom, if you pay a red, you can attach it. Um, so I think you understand, you, you should understand sort of the basics. If you've played Dragon Ball Super or you've played many other card games, you're going to basically understand the basics of this game just from taking a look at the cards. But let me go through just a round of gameplay with you. And so uh, I don't remember, you know, what's really interesting is that this box did not actually come with a rule book. Um, it's a very basic box, but no rule book. So uh, it has a QR code down here that says scan to learn to play. So in order to learn how to play this game, you're actually gonna have to scan this QR code uh, to pull up the rule book. I think that's kind of interesting. It saves a little bit of money and it allows them to keep a really updated set of rules you know, part of me wishes I got a rule book in this pack, but part of me is really glad that this is here because if the rules have changed since this set came out, I can get a totally updated set of rules from their website right here that keeps things current. And um, that is actually a really creative idea and pretty smart. Um, they are, I think, two years in. They're on set like three or four. So there's a lot of other things that have come out since. And if you need to understand other stuff, that's a good way to do it. So throughout the game, you're going to have a hand of cards, just like you would any other card game. Let my phone get caught up there. You're going to have a hand of cards. Obviously, you're not going to have probably this many cards in your hand. And at the beginning of your turn, you're going to get a chance to resource one of your cards and put it into your resource row. When you put it into your resource row, you're going to flip it upside down. It's just representing that this card is a resource that you get to use. Now, you don't start with two, and you do only draw one card each turn. Uh, I believe if you are the first player, uh, you do not draw a card, and you cannot attack on turn one. But if you are the second player, uh, you can go to clashes, and that's what they call them, clashes or attacks. Uh, right off the bat in turn one, um, and uh, and you also get to draw a card. So you're going to play uh, resources upside down throughout the game, and their color is going to represent, although each one only uh, is one, their color is going to represent uh, what type of resource it is. So for example, on your turn, you could then exhaust and play something like a flare, which costs one resource and one of them must be red for a 1-1 one, one with this ability that you could put out on the battlefield. And just like any other game, you're going to exhaust your resources. I can't, I think they call them maybe exerting or something. And then you can undo that uh, whenever you get to your untap or your unexhaust or unexertion phase. Um, so you're going to be placing cards out. Nothing in this game has summoning sickness. So if you're not going first uh, on turn one, uh, you are able to immediately 
immediately begin interacting with your opponent's board and attacking or using your characters and exerting them. And so, uh, actually, what they call it is engaging in this game. So, for example, this says, once per turn, during your primary phase, um, you may engage this card if you deal, deal one damage to a target clash card or contender. And so, uh, the clash, the contenders here, the clash card, would be these heroes. And so your opponent would have their leader out and then would also have a series of uh, these clash cards that would go out and you're able to swing in and target uh, whichever one you want. Now, whenever you do that, your opponent is able to exert one of their clash cards in order to contend with what you're doing. So let's say I wanted to take this 1-1 one, one, and I wanted to attack one of my opponents. My opponent's leader uh, could instead intercept with this card. Now you're not able to target any card that your opponent has other than their contender, but you may target with your attacks uh, any card uh, that is exhausted or exerted or engaged uh, from your opponent. And so if you want to keep your card safe, you can always keep your clash cards uh, unexerted on your board, and then your opponent can't target them. Um, you do deal damage back and forth to one another. So in this case, uh, if Flair got engaged by T-Bone, T-Bone would deal one damage and remove Flair. Flair would deal one damage back to T-Bone. But if she never gets enough attack on this attack to remove T-Bone, she won't be able to remove T-Bone. You must have enough damage on the turn that you're making the engagement to actually remove it. Otherwise, that damage is null and void. It doesn't stack. It doesn't last from one round to the next. If you were to engage T-Bone again in the same round with another attacker, uh, you would still have to be able to deal two damage in order to be able to remove him. He can bump into as many things with one attack in a turn as he wants. Um, and if he is able to deal enough damage with that one to remove it, like he would be Flair, he would then remove that unit. The one exception to that is when you attack a contender, it's going to tick down your life total. So currently I have 25 life on my contender. If I was to get attacked, of course, by T-Bone, I would take one damage. And then as a one attacker, I would deal one back. Every round, you are also able to activate the ability on your leader, depending on what health total you're at. That ability is going to get stronger. And then in addition to that, you can just engage with your leader or your superhero here by exhausting or exerting them, engaging them. And you can use their attack value, which can get buffed throughout the game by equipment. Once again, then you'll want to exert stuff. You can cross uh, into different factions and different colors in this game. Uh, I just have, of course, this blue deck, which I think is built theoretically around a little bit of ramp. And then this red deck, which of course is the aggressive one because it's illegal to make a trading card game with a red faction that is not aggressive. You're going to go back and forth, taking turns, taking a initial setup phase, playing something, take a primary phase. And then I can't remember if it's called a second primary phase or there's basically a cleanup phase at the end of it. In your primary phase, you're just going to be playing cards uh, and engaging with your various, uh, your various clash cards or uh, your other superheroes that are on the board. The game is really quite fun, guys. It really is. Um, one of the things that I really didn't like about uh, Dragon Ball Super when I played it was that all of your cards were multi-purpose. Now, theoretically, that's very cool, but it came extremely difficult, for me at least, to manage hand size in order to beat my opponent. And so a lot of times, you know, I'd be dumping a couple of cards on to boost their power level to be able to remove something, and that just didn't work out. In this game, it feels uh, a lot like Dragon Ball Super in the fact that you have your leader over here, you have your clashers that go in the middle, uh, you have abilities and equipment that you're gonna be able to play out from your hand. I don't have any in my hand right now, but you have, uh, you know, you have locations that you can put down, which are fun. Uh, you have abilities and equipments uh, that you can put out. Uh, you have the ability to engage mid-battle uh, with your uh, sort of your clash cards, which I had shown you before, energy explosion. Um, these clash buffs, uh, you have like these sorcery type cards that can go out onto the board. You have a lot of really fun and engaging things that you can do in this game. And I actually found the game quite enjoyable. In addition to that, guys, the artwork is, is just incredible for this game. It is absolutely 
beautiful. They did a really good job. Now, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of generic superheroes. So for me to get into this game, I do feel like I would have to get my hands probably on the comic book. I'm telling you guys, this glitter hollowing is maybe some of the most beautiful hollowing I've ever seen in a card game. I mean, other games really need to do this glitter hollowing. And then the cool thing is you can find a leader that you really identify with and just build around that leader. And I think that is really fun too. I don't really identify a whole lot with Mean Streak. He's not awful. By the way, guys, the cards, man, they feel like a really silky smooth, just premium card. The game itself feels really good in hand. Um, the hollowing, man, you can't feel it at all. It's just... It is done really well. In my opinion, it's one product wise, it's just it's absolutely top notch. I I think I like the feel and slide of these cards more than I like the feel or slide of Pokemon or Star Wars Unlimited cards. I think I like the borderless hollow element um, and the artwork on these way more than I like uh, Star Wars Unlimited or Pokemon. Um, and in terms of gameplay, if you're looking for a game that is sort of like a hero based, you know, you get your leader out there, uh, very similar to, you know, Magic in, in their Commander series, and you want to just see Mono Imana, let's go against one another. I really do feel like Alpha Clash fulfills that fantasy very well. If you can get past the fact that it doesn't have a known intellectual property, right? If you can get past that, and you can get into this game and you can kind of get a little bit of the lore and understand Now, some of the artwork's not as good as others, but I'm sure that the comic book helps explain at least a little bit of, you know, these characters background and where they come from. Uh, there is a really cool character that's sort of like, uh, very similar to like a war machine, uh, from Marvel that looked freaking dope. Um, I'm going to be checking this game out a little bit. I'm going to see if I can't find a couple of friends that'd be willing to play it with me. At the very least, uh, just starter decks. Even if it's just sleeving up and playing some starter decks and, uh, and playing that together. I think it's a game that I'm probably not going to buy a ton of as I'm getting... I'm, I'm still very much into Star Wars Unlimited. But it is a game that I want to uh, check out. It is a game uh, that I, I would play this with a buddy, you know, sit down, teach them how to play. And if we both got into it, maybe find a leader that we like. It's probably not something I'm gonna crack packs for, but maybe something I would look for some singles for if there's any sort of a singles market for Alpha, Alpha Clash out there. Anyway, guys, check it out. Once again, Alpha Clash um, from Rising Empire Studios. I'm sure you can find them online. And thank you to Rising Empire Studios uh, for gifting me this. And also thank you to the Game Haven for gifting me this really nice game map. Guys, that's gonna about do it. Uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out with us today. Encourage you to check in the description. We have a link to our Discord, which we just did a full rework of, and we're really doubling down and focusing on that. We hadn't really worked on the, the, the structure of the Discord for a long time, um, but we shut down our main podcast after five years of doing it, and are focusing our time and energies on our community and on our YouTube channel. And so if you're enjoying the content here and you want to jump into the conversation head on over to our discord uh, there's a link to that in the description of this episode if you like what you're seeing here head on over to patreon i know it might look confusing we need to go through gut and redo our patreon page as well but check out our patreon page too uh i think we're going to maybe start doing some stuff over there we haven't figured out exactly what that's going to look like but we're planning on doing some stuff over there for our patreon page as well Thank you guys for watching this. Uh, give us a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe uh, if you enjoy the content. I can't wait. I'm going to be putting out some more Star Wars Unlimited content in the week leading up to the release of the game. So probably between pre-release and the release of the new set, uh, Shadows of the Galaxy, you're going to be seeing uh, maybe four or five videos uh, revolving around leaders and some of the thoughts that I have about the game. I just haven't had a lot of time to shoot stuff in June. We're on vacation, very busy, hectic time of life. Um, but I am going to be doing some Star Wars Unlimited content, and I do have, I think, three booster box, a couple of pre-release kits, and the two-player kit um, for Shadows of the Galaxy on pre-order. And so I'm going to be busting all that stuff out. We're going to be doing some box openings and pack openings here on stream, or here on, on the YouTube channel. Probably going to be streaming some of it live, and then we'll post it later. So come by and hang out with us for that as well. Check out all the other content on the channel. If you're into Pokemon or Lorcana, we got plenty of content for you here as well. That's going to do it, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, campers.